about the evolution of management, the objectives and also the management by objectives, the details of planning and organizing. Today we will focus on coordination, coordinating. Coordinating has emerged as one of the core functions of management. So in this lecture we will attempt to explore different dimensions of coordination and you must know the concept of coordination, principles of effective coordination, features of coordination and why we do this coordination in terms of the aims of coordination, types of coordination, need for coordination, importance of coordination and also the problems involved in coordination. I think these are the learning objectives and we will try and get that complete picture of how coordination is the key function of management. Coordination involves the development of units of purpose and the harmonious implementation of plans for the achievement of desired ends. In our previous lecture, we looked at organizing would involve division of labor, creation of departments and arranging these departments in such a way that overall it is linked to the stated objectives of the organization and also the plans to meet or achieve those set objectives. So the coordination is the next step of bringing the departments and establishing a harmonious relationship towards this implementation of plans. So planning is a must, division of labor is a must, departmentation is a must, effective organization is a must when we start thinking about coordination. And each of these things are pretty interlinked. Consider particularly the coordination as the essence of management because the management organization is basically interdependent in its nature. Individuals can do activities independently, but when you think of organization, when you think of management, it is always, it is coordinated effort, interdependent activities and interdependent activities towards productive action because management we have viewed earlier is towards maximization of profits, the gains, increase of productivity, the reduction of waste and many of these things and each of these things will or can be done only through effective coordination. And that is how it is essential to understand coordination in detail. Orderly synchronization of fitting together of the interdependent efforts of individuals in order to attain a common goal. So the, the key element uh, of any of the definitions of coordination is these interdependence, interdependency of the various activities. So the departments have to work together individuals have to work together, various functions have to help support, it has to be mutually, mutually inclusive to look at, to achieve and excel in any area of activities or in the business. And that is how coordination is an aspect of synchronization. You can look at any organization, it may be an educational institution, it may be the hospital, it may be the business organization. So typically if you see in a hospital, the activities of doctors, nurses, the work attendants, lab technicians, all must be synchronized if you think the patient needs to get the good care. So that is how the simplest view is that the coordination is a must and a necessary element and it involves both human efforts as well as the non-human resources. So the materials, the information and use of various facilities in the organization and that is how the coordination is not only focused on the human efforts but also the utilization of the resources of the organization. Coordination also the group action under team spirit. So the and proper integration can provide creative force ensuring 
success. In other words, organizing, organization, you would have defined duties and responsibilities. You would have recruited right people. You have created specializations. You have created departments. But at different points of time, the human initiative, human creativity, the calculated risk taking, all these things have to come into picture. So coordination necessarily involves all of these things. So it is success driven and the success driven is also linked to the initiative, the passion, the risk taking of the various members of the team and that is how the team spirit is there at the back of any coordination or coordinating of the activities. Similarly, if you look at the views of different people, modern enterprises consist of a number of departments such as production, purchase, sales, finance, personnel. We have seen in the as a part of the departmentation. It could be geographically distributed groups, it could be product related groups or it could be the function related groups as we are seeing like this production, purchase and sales. And each of these groups have to work in harmony. All of them have to manage their interdependencies and work effectively. If they start working in an independent way or if they manage their interdependencies to a lesser degree, most of the time it results in organizational waste of resources, waste of time and many a times it also results in blame game and problems of leadership, problems of control and so coordination is also seen as the key element of managerial functions. So if you see what are the basic principles, what are the requisites of effective coordination, one can list many things, one can list an exhaustive set of things. But in this lecture, I would like to consider what people have or researchers, practitioners have identified as some of the key or the prioritized aspects only. So please do not think the listing, the narration what I am going to give is an exhaustive listing, but treat it as only illustrative aspects of coordination. One of the first things you need to really bother with is the early start. So the coordination should happen at the very early stage of the planning and the policy making. At the time of setting the objectives itself, then people are involved, people understand, people appreciate. So there should be a mutual consultation among all the concerned stakeholders, concerned departments, concerned individuals at the preparation of the plan itself. So preparing the plan jointly is one of the key steps towards achieving better coordination. Second important thing or principle one could think of is whenever you have a direct presence, direct understanding of what is happening, then there will be a better coordination. So it is the personal contact among all the people concerned, face to face communication, face to face interaction would always be most useful for direct coordination. Today we are seeing several of the groups, they work in an impersonal way, in an asynchronous way and people also call it as in a virtual way. But we are talking about those situations where when people can be in the same area, they are not geographically distributed, they all work with the same time frame. So in such situations, if they can come together, if the boss and subordinates, if they have a face to face interaction and a direct interaction, coordination would be better. The next uh, thing if very clearly if you see that they can discuss this in detail, they can discuss their ideas, they can look at their goals, what they consider as the perfect goals or what is achievable goals and then through that process of discussion and dialogue, they can overcome the misunderstandings. The next important principle is continuity. See the continuity can be viewed in different ways, but it is the basis of an organizational structure. It should not depend upon the whims and fancies of the individuals. 
So as the individuals come and take positions in the organization, one may start prioritizing. So when you have set plans, set goals, set understanding, when people are working together, then if people start reinterpreting, questioning the activities, then there would be issues, then people agree on something, they work on something else during the, the plan implementation process, but they end up getting some other results. And that is how a continuity of the framework, continuity of the understanding, continuity of the leadership becomes one of the critical elements of coordination. So one can say the continuation of the enterprise itself. And also, as we mentioned, the coordination must start from the stage of planning and should go on all the time as it is a continuous process. So the every time you are able to refer back to the plan documents and the planning which you have done with respect to the overall goals of the organization, that must be understood and then any corrections, any improvements need to be in relation to what you have agreed upon in the previous steps. The next important part of the coordination or the principle could be the dynamism. Coordination should not be very rigid. It is not just adherence to the procedures. It is not just very strict adherence to the plans. As people go, the, there are always the difficulties are there, the problems are there. So modifications one need to do. So as one group is modifying, the others need to understand why are they modifying, what are the changes they are trying to bring in. Particularly in, a, in the current business context, when the sales people collect the details and then or the marketing group when they give the information to the production, then some changes could come because of the customer preferences. So those things need to be articulated. Some new technologies may be available. So in a fast changing technological context, so newer priorities may be get, get defined either by the organization or by the customers. So the important thing is the coordination. So you are able to respond to the changes in the environment or within the organization and then able to incorporate those changes. So if dynamism is not there, then usually it results in very rigid working conditions. The next part of it is simplified organization. The principle which facilitates effective coordination is the simplified organizational structure. The organizational structure we saw yesterday that the reporting relationships, the link between various departments, the kind of authority and the responsibility you have defined throughout the organizational system. So if it is too complex and it is too distributed, then it is not easy for the effective coordination. Let me give you a simple example. If some person is supervising three divisions, three departments, to that extent it is easy to coordinate the activities, but if someone is viewing about 18 departments or 20 departments, then it is next to impossible because the time, the effort, the comprehension and the details to be seen gets reduced. So it is extremely important to have the structure which is responsive, responsible and then has a, has a reporting relationship which is basically manageable. What is manageable means the key element is that the concern manager is able to coordinate all the activities. Coordination means it is the supervision, it is the guidance, it is the direction, it is the control, all are basic elements of coordination. So the operations and functions which are closely related and connected may be put under the charge of one executive so that one person then can relate all these related activities and take some of these views. But some managers do take or do have the opinions that even dissimilar activities may be put under the charge of one executive for ensuring effective coordination. So sometimes two functions, particularly if you see the production and marketing, 
operations and R&D or the design. So some of these things some you can put together which has a kind of a coordinated or closely linked activities but sometimes the specializations between HR and finance can be coordinated by one person. So the, so the key thing is that grouping of the activities and making one person responsible to supervise, share information, give the direction is the key thing of coordination. Another thing which we have talked about when we discussed about the management by objectives is clear cut objective. Clarity is important and the understanding at all levels will always help for better coordination because then people can link their effort, they can see what others are doing and they also have the overall understanding and the appreciation of the organizational goals. So the goals and objectives play a very key role in coordination. The managers of different departments should be clearly aware of the objectives of the enterprise. How you do is a matter of details. So that is how the communication becomes a, an extremely relevant and important thing that we will discuss in, in our next lecture. The clear definition of authority and responsibility is an another dimension of effective coordination. We have seen in the organization people do give the answers that sir I am not responsible or I was not aware that I should be doing these things. So then the person who is trying to coordinate the activities finds it extremely difficult. So clear cut authority helps in reducing conflicts among the different officers. It also helps in carrying out their job with unity of purpose. So the responsibility and authority definitions, discussions of those things would always would be most useful for effective coordination. And we have mentioned effective communication is another principle or a requisite. Through communication the individual and department differences can be resolved. It is not only negative in terms of handling the differences but also achieving better appreciation of the roles better appreciation of the contribution, better appreciation of the efforts of each one of the units putting together to achieve the stated objectives. It also helps in discussing changes, making necessary adjustments particularly in the program while they are implementing and for proper coordination necessary thing is also the effective communication which we will, we will see as we go along. But the effective leadership is another element. By effective leadership what we are trying to do is to coordinate all the activities of the people. So activities and people they go together and the binding thing is the leader. So it creates confidence in the subordinates and enhance their morale. So the leader's role is to build the confidence in the people provide that required information and help people to move towards the stated objectives. Along with the leadership which is basically inspiring, helping people to focus on the required thing is also the effective supervision. Effective supervision is required in coordination because supervisor can easily detect the deviation from planned course of action and immediate corrective steps may be taken. So the coordination, the other side of the coordination is also control. So the control and coordination, control, coordination and communication becomes clearly three pillars of any leadership. The devil is always in the details and that is how the, the direct supervision helps in correcting, looking at the defects as early as possible so and helping people to do the right things. So if you see and if you summarize all of whatever we have discussed so far, right, the characteristics of the co coordination or the features is first an orderly arrangement of group efforts. It is not disorderly, it is not left to the whims and fancies of the individual but it is well defined 
well thought out, well arranged, well linked kind of human efforts. The next point of view is that it provides unity of action in pursuit of a common purpose. So that is how the division of labor, arrangement of various specialization may it be line of staff responsibilities and then you are putting each of these activities, the effort towards that stated understood common goals. Unity of action is considered to be the heart of coordination process. So whenever you see an organization, whenever you see an organization doing extremely well, you also know pretty well it is coordinated activities. So individuals know their roles, they also know to whom they are supporting, what else will happen and each of their actions are highly goal linked and that is how the good coordinated activities can be very experiential. You can by seeing, by being present in that organization, you know everything has its place, everything is planned and all these planned actions are seen by someone and it is well rehearsed and so in other words it is well coordinated. So aims at achieving the common purpose of the enterprise through the ordinary orderly synchronization of the efforts of the subordination. So there is order, there is a conscious and a deliberate attempts and each of these attempts can be seen they are all linked to one another and overall they are linked to the goals. So it is a process where by an executive develops an orderly pattern of group effort for accomplishing the common objectives of the enterprise. You look at any number of these views, any number of these characters, characteristics of the coordination process, you will see the role of the leadership, the role of the communication and the clearly the focusing of the effort towards the goal of the organization. So it is the smooth interplay of the functions and forces of all the different components and part of the organization. So the operation of business activities in a systematic sequence. So the, the coordination gets its expression through this plant interplay of various activities and then the there is elimination of overlapping and duplication of work. So people do not do things in an unplanned way, people do the things because it is wanted and it is desired and it is clearly linked to the goals. And it, the back of any of these things is the development of the team spirit. And so there is very clearly their efforts are directed to the business goal through this team efforts. So one can see the types, one can see the types of coordination, it could be the type 1 or could be the type 2, they, but howsoever you can see the type 1 could be the whether you are trying to do this coordination within the group, internal coordination or it could be done through externally. So the coordination is done by an external person. And similarly, the, in the organization you can see vertical coordination which can happen between the boss and the subordinates or what we have seen in a line kind of an organization between the person who is responsible and directly reporting authorities. Or it also could be the horizontal from one department to the other, one function to the other or groups at the same level. Let us spend little more time with respect to the internal coordination. Coordination among the employees in the same departments or the section, among workers and managers at different levels, among branch offices, plants is all called the internal coordination. That is lot of coordinated effort happens between the team, within the departments or within the division these are the parts of the internal coordination. The external coordination is that the team with others, both the others could be within the organization or could be outside the organization. So coordination with customers, suppliers, government and outsiders with whom the enterprise has business connections is 
also called the external coordination for the smooth functioning of the various activities within the group you require both internal coordination as well as the external coordination. Similarly, when you look at coordination as we mentioned it could be the vertical coordination, coordination of the activities of the manager, the deputy manager, the superintendent and below him. So, this whatever the layers you have in the organization. So, one level to the other is could be the kind of the vertical coordination. Vertical coordination helps in understanding the, the not only the goals, but any changes which are coming, any changes in priority coming to link both the short term and long term plans of the organization. But if you see the horizontal coordination is among different departments of the enterprise, the people at the same levels. So, it is production, purchasing, material, sales, finance. So, it is at the same level there is need for information, there is need for guidance, there is need for commitment, there is need for reporting to one another. So, all these things are could be considered as horizontal coordination. So, between the groups, between the different departments you see the horizontal coordination. So, the question comes internal and external coordination, vertical and horizontal coordination all these things are necessary elements, necessary part of the coordination effort. When you see this need for coordination, very clearly we have recognized large scale business enterprise employing a large number of persons require coordinate the efforts interest of individuals to achieve a common goal. So, one important thing nature of coordination is coming by mere the size of the organization and the quantum of activities to be performed. More the number of activities, larger the size, then efforts for coordination is also much more. This is one. The second important thing is the, the very clearly the efforts of employees need to be closely understood, coordinated and then also making sure that there is no duplication of efforts. Otherwise in the organization people tend to do things, but you also realize that it is done at several places. So, coordination will help for avoidance of the waste of resources, duplication of activities within the organization. Similarly, as we mentioned that large business enterprise consists of various departments the departments of production, purchase, sales, everything. So, to make all to work towards the stated objectives in a balanced way, the coordination becomes another sequential and an important thing. And the balancing of various activities with different degrees of qualities of individual and the competencies of people. It is also felt as a necessity it is not a luxury because the kind of line and staff structure of an organization. So, normally the which members may not be very clear about their basic roles or they may over expand their basic roles. We have talked about in the line and staff organization, sometimes the staff becomes a kind of a burden on the line roles by not playing their positive roles. So, such time the coordination and the person need to balance the power between the line and the staff. Similarly, various other functions of management, planning, organizing, staffing can be effectively performed by means of coordination. By this time you realize how core this coordination the as an activity of management and also the how coordination is linked to the planning, organizing and also the topic which we are going to discuss later on about the communication and control. So, it is regarded as the essence of managerial function and it is also seen that it is the end result of managerial function. So, for many people there is no difference between management, managing and coordination or coordinating. So, that is how people try to view and define management. 
and that is how all the departments and sections are duly welded into one united and integrated whole working to achieve these common goals. So the unity of direction, unity of objective and coordination tones up the not only the performance of the organization but also the morale of the members of the organization, morale of the or the we feeling or the group belonging of the members and also increases the job satisfaction, job satisfaction in terms of their pride, in terms of that they have done something, they have achieved something. So these things are also part of the coordination. So in an uncoordinated people feel that they are part of a crowd, it will not give them the required identity. There is no sense of purpose, there is no sense of responsibility. So people also get dissatisfied, disgusted. It also results in people leaving the organization whereas the coordination brings that belongingness, attachment, pride and satisfaction. But if you start seeing the various elements of this, there is always a problem of coordination. So we need to systematically look at if coordination is great, if coordination is essential and we know what are the different principles of coordination, we should also appreciate the problems which will come while you are coordinating. The difficulties of coordination is basically coming because of the size, large business enterprise, right? Because the number of departments are more, then the, there are issues of collaboration. If collaboration demands that they are able to deal with their differences, differences in their attitudes, differences in their perception. So the problems of perception, problems of attitudes, problems of specialization do come and play significantly in the effort of coordination. So the size and the complexity of the organization in terms of number of products, number of uh, processes, number of territories they are operating all will result as issues of coordination. So as you put issues of coordination, what could happen really? Initially you have several departments. But in order to coordinate these departments, you will increase more and more layers for supervision, for contact and for collecting information, for clarifying the information and also for controlling. So once you start putting more and more layers, the organization will have several levels and several layers. As there are several layers, then the transmission of information from one level to the other becomes more complex. As you are seeing that the size will contribute first for complexities at the horizontal level and then it starts giving the problems at the vertical level. So the vertical and horizontal distribution, differentiation, more and more departments, more and more layers always contributes for the ineffectiveness of coordination. We will see a few more. Then what could happen is the differences in orientation towards the particular goals. The members of different departments develop their views about how best to advance towards the goal in the interest of the organization. So some would give importance to quantity. They may forget the requirement of the quality. Some may give more emphasis to quality and then they would like to look at more volumes as you have seen in some organization they say this is an export quality but this is another quality which is defined for the domestic markets. So you can see the perceptions of the quality then within that the what one would like what one would like to pursue. So that is how the different departments pursue their own self objectives short term things but at the cost of overall requirements of the organization. Similarly, indiscipline. The indiscipline good can get tolerated at different uh, levels initially for the purpose of convenience. When you have less number of people to attend to the task, if someone has come late, you would rather accept that person. But the late coming will become a kind of a norm. 
late coming becomes a kind of a liability over a period of time when somebody is looking for discipline then he would like to see that one aspect of coordination is compromised because you wanted persons but then you wanted persons with discipline so it becomes two different things. Uh, the organization see these kinds of things can lead to its own set of perceptions and then differences in their points of view and then one could see the issues of mutual appreciation and mutual appreciation gets distorted. When people criticize each other then people do not respond to the requirements of each other that is how the coordination gets also affected. So the, the sales people product variety may take precedence over product quality. So as they want to see the speed to the market they want to introduce the different things sometimes you start testing with the customers and it is not tested very well within the organization. <coughs> you can also see marketing managers may regard design as the most important for organization success while accountants may see cost control as the most essential things. In other words the departmental objectives, department goals per se can become conflicting with the goals of the other departments and if they do not see the overall requirements of the organization they may pursue their departmental objectives at the cost of the overall goals of the organization and that is the time where both may look at one level as right but what really suffers is the process of coordination and also the differences in time orientation. Some members of an organization such as production managers will be more concerned with problems that have to be solved immediately within a short period of time because they are crisis driven, they want to fix the problems on a daily basis and see that volumes are out and they meet their targets. But there are could be others who would be research and development driven. So they may be concerned with the problems that may take years to be solved, does not matter. So they may slow down in terms of the deployment of some new technology or a new tool and that would involve some period of trial, some period of experimentation, some period of stoppage of work. But these things are not appreciated, not supported by the, the operations because their metrics, their measurement their assessment of their effectiveness is in terms of what do they do, what do they do on a uh, to see that the volume or the quantities or the targets are met. So the, they are not bothered about number of improvements or number of innovation. So when the groups start perceiving the goals at two different levels then there could be issues of coordination. Further the differences in interpersonal orientation, the interpersonal orientation which can come the persons who are heading different departments. In some activities of orientation such as production there may be relatively more formal ways of communication and decision making because very clearly they want to follow the hierarchy, they want to follow the order, they want to make sure that everything is happening in its place. So the manager is very clear about information and control as the topmost priority. He may, may be less relationship driven but you will also see in other situations, in other activities such as R&D the communication and decision making may be informal. What people call there is an emphasis for collegiality, all people are same, it does not matter that who is giving ideas. So when such situations come suddenly you see that informality what is useful and what is acceptable method of coordination in an R&D becomes totally unacceptable, useless in a, in a tight manufacturing kind of a system where everybody has to follow the stated procedures, stated uh, steps there is no scope for anybody to think. So the, you will see that when people move from one department to the other or they have to work in another situation 
then there are aspects for coordination where people do not see eye to eye. And similarly the adherence to the rules, so the differences in formality of structure, formalization is to the extent that you follow strictly the rules and there are punishments for each of the rule acceptance, rule obedience. Then you see the each unit organization may have different methods and standards for evaluating progress towards objectives and also for rewarding employees. So sometimes you may just follow because they strictly they are following the stated procedures. But in other words somebody would normally reward if the group is highly driven towards innovation, breaking the rules itself may get rewarded in some other situations. So the coordination when you see what are the preferences of the group and how do they respond to the situation becomes much more important and very clear. So in a production department where quantity and quality are rigidly controlled, the evaluation and reward process might be quite formal while in the personnel department, right? The standard of performance may be much more loosely defined. So in the in such situations, the it is the performance standards which cannot be stated in a quantifiable manner, but then it gets defined in terms of the personal qualities, the enthusiasm, the passion what one would bring. So such some of these things become more, more relevant and more important. So how these people see, one may look at what the person has, another person may see what the person has does or what the person has actually done or has delivered. So when you look at this coordination as we have seen it is, it is a coordinated means, it is a planned and deliberate orderly arrangements of various efforts, various activities towards understanding and reaching the stated goals. We have also seen the types of coordination. We require coordination internally within the members of the team as well as it is important to coordinate with all the stakeholders who could be within the organization or also who could be outside the organization, maybe the government, maybe the bankers, maybe the policy makers. So the linking of the efforts of the group with respect to the external uh, stakeholders. So we require internal as well as external coordination. Similarly, you also require vertical and horizontal coordination within the group from boss to the subordinate, from managers to the assistant managers, from assistant managers to the supervisors, from supervisors to the operators. So you require a vertical coordination. Similarly, you also require the horizontal coordination from one department to the other to manage their interdependencies, to get that required information, to respond to the requirements of the others, coordination becomes the key element. And both internal and the external, horizontal and vertical coordination to be supported with team spirit, with good leadership. So we have also seen various features, the aims and characteristics of coordination. It is necessary to follow the set of principles. The principles are not exhaustive but illustrative. But to make sure that people are involved at the planning level itself, then people are told very clearly their duties and responsibilities and clearly defined authorities, clearly defined objectives always help for better coordination. And similarly, we have seen there could be many problems which can come in effective uh, coordination. So the problems can come because of the way they look at the objectives from a short term or a from a long term perspective or the kind of emphasis which they give with respect to quantity versus the quality. Also sometimes the perceptions of the ego of the individuals. So the ego, power, politics we can also see at a later point of time but each of these things can come in the way of effective coordination. That is how the leadership becomes very critical element of coordination. So we have seen coordination as the basic and a fundamental and a synonym of 
the management and managerial functions. So without coordination you can confidently say that there is no management. So in the next part of our lecture we will definitely see the aspects of communication, the elements of communication process, various forms of communication and also we will understand the oral communication, the merits, limitations and applications. So communication and coordination according to many they go together and we will expand in the next lecture on this aspect of communication.